And now for something completely different. Smoke medical. We eat every day. The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour represent Brian Hoppy and Pastis. Listener discretion is advised. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. He's the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour starts in four, three, two, hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour with Hoppy. Hello there. This is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy, like you already know. We are live on Hoppy TV, so you can give me a call. Let me load up Google Voice. 856 49 Hoppy. It's 856 494 6773. Now, if you're listening on demand and you're going, man, I missed out on talking to Hoppy, you can always DM me or message me, and you can leave me a voicemail at 856 49 Hoppy. It's 856 494 6773, and we will be sure to play it on the show. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And you can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. We have breaking news for the Ryan Hoppy Radio Network. We are now a part of the Big Mama Radio Network at bigmamaradio.com. Jason Big Mama Jones is a radio legend. He's been in Fort Myers forever. He has worked in Tampa. And he's got the Rise and Grind morning show on bigmamaradio.com and on the Big Mama Radio app. We will be on Big Mama Radio every Saturday and Sunday at 4 p.m. So if you're listening right now and you're listening on the Big Mama Radio app, hello, let me explain myself to all of the people. We're getting new listeners every single day, and now they're on a whole new platform. People in Fort Myers might know me from my past radio life at 1025 The Bone, but if you don't, I'm going to introduce myself. I've wanted to go into radio since I was in first grade. I've been in radio for more than a decade, since 2012. And I went to a radio trade school. I worked briefly in Cleveland. And I've worked in Tampa for the last eight years. And I've always wanted to be a part of the Fort Myers media market. So I'm very excited. But to me, the most boring radio was when a radio show would get picked up in a new city and just talk about what they're going to do. You know, like sometimes the show would get syndicated and they would be like, the show's going to be like this or the show's going to be like that. I'm just going to get to the content. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. I saw this first headline here because what I do on this show is I rant about celebrity news and this headline to me is hogwash. It's utter BS. Now, I have hyperhidrosis, so I sweat very easily. When I tell you I sweat very easily, working some of the promotion events here at Beasley Media Group, I am drenched. If my shirt is light blue, it turns into dark blue. I will be drenched working. And back in gym class, when we would run a marathon, or it felt like that, but we would run a mile, I would be drenched. So I like to have my apartment super cold and I have a fan right next to me. And uh, this headline here from the Today Show, from this uh, study, to me is fake news. It's not real. It says, warm bedrooms result in better sleep. How? Unless you're okay with being hot or you're from a country where maybe there's not air conditioning as much like Puerto Rico. I literally cannot sleep if the room is hot. Like I'll toss and turn, but my face just feels so icky and I feel so like just awful. I've never had a hot room be a thing when I'm sleeping and be like, oh, I feel so comfortable because I also sweat and then the uh, bed sheets get all wet. And then if you're doing the deed, all of a sudden, that's another thing. When I'm doing the deed, I get so sweaty. In past relationships, I had to have a sex blanket to lay on the bed because the bed would just be drenched. You would get laid before going to bed, and then all of a sudden, you're like, oh, no, the bed's drenched. So, yes, I sweat very easily, and we'll get right into it. Happy Hot Topic. 
Now to some health news this morning. Changing your bedroom temperature to get a better night's sleep. There's a new study out of Harvard, and it suggests that adults over the age of 50 should get this actually crank up the heat. Sleep oh, so since I'm 29 going on 30, uh, I guess I'm fine. Expert Dr. Carol Ash is here to shed more light on this. Dr. Ash, good morning. Good, good morning. Good to see you. We were all emailing about this <laughs> last night. So before, the recommendation had been 65 degrees for all adults. So now why this new recommendation? Well, we think it's related to the fact that as you age, your ability to regulate your internal temperature is not as robust. So you have to maintain a, a temperature throughout the day to, to keep those rhythms that wake. Well, that's great to keep the rhythms and all of the uh, professional health talk going. But what if you sweat or what if it's hot? It's like saying, I don't want to smoke cigarettes, but I might smoke a cigarette. You like things that are bad for you. So if you're comfortable being cold while sleeping, that's fine. They're overthinking it. Bacon sleep cycles and that temperature, your ability to keep warm is not as good. So that we think is really critical. And you need a temperature 68 to 77 degrees. I have it at 70 in my place. And once the temperature gets over 77 degrees, Ooh. your sleep efficiency decreases by 5 to 10 percent, which is... Duh! If your house is at 80 degrees, you're not going to sleep well. I mean, you kind of get used to it, but it's just icky, man. Almost an hour of sleep. So again, that ability to not regulate the temperature as well and, and that sleep efficiency. And it's personal. You know, the temperature changes only two degrees. And All right. I have a rule on the show. If I'm bored, you're getting bored. So we're going to move on. But here's the thing is like, here's why sleeping in a cold room is the best. It's because you can put layers on to get warm. And I'm not talking about a cold room, like, because I'm from Chicago. I don't know if you can tell by my accent. But uh, in Chicago, like, we didn't have the best heat. So I guess I'm used to always having blankets on. But I would rather have a cold room, like, with the air conditioning type of cold, and have to wrap myself up. You should always wrap it up, gentlemen. You should wrap yourself up with the blanket rather than, like, being sweaty, you know what I mean? Like, if your room is cold with the air conditioning, you can figure out a way to kind of get comfortable. But if your room's too hot, oh, it's so icky. You have, like, the sheet over you, and you're just terrible. It's terrible. At my first apartment that was really ghetto off of 22nd Avenue in St. Pete, I'm telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, sometimes the air, it was a box uh, air conditioning machine that was connected to the window. And first of all, it would go like, and make all these awful noises. But then when the repairman would come over, the uh, service that came with the uh, crappy apartment, of course, when the repairman came over, was not happening. Once the repairman would leave, would return. It was the most irritating thing of all time. And in that house, literally, the sun was just beaming over it, and there was really no trees around it, and it was so awful because what's going on? And then some, sometimes the air wasn't working. So literally, at my nice apartment right now, I have an efficiency room. I am so grateful. I love it. It's the best feeling ever. I would rather be cold. Now, air conditioning cold, not cold weather. Speaking of that, I am sincerely asking the universe, please, universe, can we get a cold front in Florida? It was kind of nice when it got a little chilly, kind of during the uh, past hurricane this past week. And I'll talk about what I did during the hurricane in a second. But my God, it's like the universe said, we're going to cool off Florida for a second. And then all of a sudden, when the hurricane was over, it is hotter than balls outside. I mean, you literally cannot be outside without sweating. But I would take that any day over a Chicago winter or any winter. If you're listening in Rochester, New York, where I used to be on the radio, or if you're listening in Cleveland, where I used to be on the radio, you know the cold weather. I would rather have it be 100 million degrees out like it is any day over the negative 10 degree weather, never seeing the sun and snow. And people who think they like the cold weather, they're homebodies. People that go, oh, I'm cool with the winter. It doesn't bother me. They're cool with that because they never leave their house. Me, I have ADHD. I don't know if you can tell by the way I talk fast, but I have ADHD. And I love, 
I love going outside and doing things. And when it's cold outside, you really can't do that. This just in. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. Oh, man. This Saturday, I will be at 1701. If you're listening on uh, Big Mama Radio, this is in the past. But on uh, Friday, I will be at First Friday in downtown St. Pete. Saturday, I will be at 1701 seeing my co-host Pharaoh do his thing. And DJ Corrupt, it's going to be a good time. And then Sunday, it's my return. And not my return. It's my beginning of my dirty 30s. This weekend, you can totally come out and hang out with Ryan Hoppy and... Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Is my guy Richard doing the voiceover. Pharaoh, Pharaoh. You like it? Pharaoh, Pharaoh. This is my favorite one. The best voiceover I've ever had. Hoppy Hour where your medical card is required to listen. And we have this one. Marijuana. Yep. Marijuana. Oh, sure. Marijuana. Got it. Marijuana. Okay. Marijuana. I don't know if you can tell allegedly, but I like the beautiful plant. That's all alleged through my medical card and my ADHD and bipolar. Yeah, it's been alleged since 2009. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. All right. We're going to come back, and we're going to get this party going. We have so much to get into. If you're listening on Big Mama Radio, hi, my name's Ryan Hoppy, and I'm very grateful to Big Mama for this opportunity. Now, on my show, I play Tampa Bay rappers that are really, really good. I got about 15 of them. If you are a Fort Myers rapper, or if you are a listener of Big Mama Radio and you are a rapper, email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com, and I will see if I can play your music on air. As long as you don't suck and you're like at least on Spotify, I'll play your music, you know? I got to have a little bit of standards. Like, I'm not going to be a dick and be like, I'm not going to play your music, but if you're making music off a garage band, I probably won't play it. But- I'm going to play some local artists in a little bit, but first I'm going to play this song because it's not copywritten. It's Soundmaster T. This is from 2009 and it's Do It Like My Birthday. And the reason I'm playing it is because my birthday is around the corner and I'm about to have a crisis. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Sagittarius birthday, November 27. Do it like that until I, I, I end up in money heaven. They be thinking they be flaming and torching them with the bullshit they handing now. So the twist to make a wishing. Blow the candles out, blow the candles out, blow the candles out. Sagittarius birthday, November 27. Do it like that until I, I, I end up in money heaven. They be thinking they be flaming and torching them with the bullshit they handing now. So the twist to make a wishing. Blow the candles yeah. out, pull an all white phantom out. I'ma kill him with the pants and the shirt and the shoes and the hat with the shades and the chain and the watch is the reason I be standing now. Where ice and spin that cake while I lick the ice and off the cake. Uh-huh. It's twist the B day, y'all. Come on, everybody, put your boys in the ready with me. Do it like my birthday. Do it, do it like my birthday. Do it, do it, I like do it like my birthday. Go 
Gucci pumps, shoes matching the belt, skirt matching the blouse, chain matching the ring. Yeah, I'm doing my thing. Y'all got so many haters. Why is so many hating? Sick like a mental patient. I floss like a dentist patient. Sick and testing my patience. Sick and working my nerves. I'm getting spinning that money like the first and the third. Laying on gay skin, blowing cushion the wind, just like. Poppin' no tags, the visas bustin' the sack uh -huh. I'ma whip it when I'm gone hard to get a gone mad chop Models all around me, so I'm buyin' up the bar yeah. I'm a hood star and I'm partin' like a rock star yeah. Only at my pick game, meaning you can't upgrade me, mommy, I'm the guap What's up? Do it, let my, 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 What's going on? Hey, hey, you need. That's what we say around here. Choked out, choked out. Bling with the fresh gear. Oh, keep it cock, snake skin, buck, 50 hat, candy paint, old school, rolling round on four flats. Hit the liquor store, mix the Remy with the drone. Rolling on the 94, looking for them sexy. Oh, I'm falling with jelly, cause I'm a flirt. Call the VIP, the God, watch out. Birthday. I do it like it hurts, hey, okay. watching these bad just to do it in the worst way, I'm a winner, mama, I am in the first place, catch me on the dance floor throwing up my birthplace, I'm an animal, I woke up on a Monday, and subsequently I ain't go to sleep till it was Thursday, it's a shot of Patron and blow a birthday, get up with a bitch, oh yeah, on the first day, Burger King, mama, you can have it your way, or I can bring another bitch and y'all can do it her way, Hotel room, do not disturb me. That's how I'ma do it when I do it like my birthday. Yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. I love when Spotify takes a second to load. This is Pezhead, David Pezza, DavePezza.com with Betches Love Brunch. Over 10,000 TikToks have used this song. table for eight please what about nine i can join yeah thanks you're welcome okay what's happening babe let me tell you what's up what up Betches love brunch it's what we do for this following segment has been brought to you by the best kava and kratom around which this company is actually out of four myers where big mama radio.com is as well our newest affiliate Mitra-9.com Mitra9 The best kava and kratom around If you go to Mitra-9.com And at checkout Use keyword hoppy You can save 20% On the best kava and kratom around This is also being brought to you by DZBZHoney.com The best CBD Delta 8 honey around Oh it gives you a good high if you go to dzbzhoney.com and at checkout, use keyword hoppy, H-O-P-P-E, you can save 20%. That's one-fifth. I can do basic math. Also, this is being brought to you by Astro Bliss Hemp Lemonade. A-S-T-R-O-B-L-E-M-E.com. And at checkout. What do you think the uh, keyword would be? H O P P E. Happy hour. Happy hour. And now for something completely different. Call Hoppy now. 856 49 Hoppy. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Or chat him live via the Hoppy Radio app. It's Hoppy Hour, and it's time to turn Ryan on. Other stations are tuned in too. Oh yeah. 856 49 Hoppy. And it's 856 494 6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio and you can always email me. Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. Uh Coach Beard 
87 on Instagram chimes in on Hoppy TV. I'm wearing a Super Mario Brothers uh, t-shirt with all the characters from that universe, and he says he likes my shirt. I appreciate it. As always, if you go to RyanHoppyRadio.com, there it has my complete archive of every single episode of Hoppy TV ever, going back to when I snuck on air at 1025 The Bone and with the uh, ever-growing podcast known as Hoppy Hour. I see this in the news here. Um, I am sick and tired of everybody hating on transgender people. I've noticed this trend recently that people are bullying them, people are judging them, people are making fun of them. Who cares what they want to do with their body? Unless someone is hurting an animal or a kid, it is not your body, none of this matters. So if a man wants to identify as a woman and be pansexual, have at it! The people that often hate on transgender are the ones that are not happy with their life. And they hate that transgender people are finally getting rights. And it bothers them because they're either in the closet or they haven't been able to experience sexuality to the fullest. And they hate that everybody on on the LGBTQ plus community is being able to express it finally publicly. It's insane. Why would you care what someone does with their body? It's not your body. And frankly, some of the people who are uh, hating on the transgender people, the people that went from being a woman to a man look better than you. I mean, seriously, why does it matter? Why does it matter what a woman does with her body? I know it's controversial, but it's not your body. And you can't base it off of, oh, God. You can't base everything off of religion. Because there's atheists that don't believe in God like me. It's ridiculous. And it says here, this is from the Daily Mail, Elon Musk calls his transgender daughter Vivian a communist who thinks anyone rich is evil and accuses private Santa Monica High School of brainwashing her. No. You know what happened? Her being transgender has nothing to do with anything because I believe you are born that way. If you want to identify as another gender, you are born that way. It's in your brain. But Elon, you're the effing communist who's making fun of your daughter. You know how much of a scumbag you are and how much that makes you look like a piece of garbage? You ruin Twitter and you're ruining your kids. You should be loving her and appreciating her. But all you do is knock up women so you can have this huge legacy. What a legacy you're leaving. You're making fun of your daughter, you scumbag leech. I've had enough of him. His opinion really doesn't matter. He's just an idiot who was born into money. Yeah, he's helped out Tesla, but the guy's an asswipe. You see what he's doing to Twitter? The guy's an asswipe. And his own father went on the Kyle and Jackie O show in Sydney and made fun of him and said without this money, he would have nothing. At least someone like Jeff Bezos created the money. Jeff Bezos, and you, you can include his family giving him money, but families always help out their kids. So that's not an excuse to say that he didn't build it from the ground up and he also had his ex. But Jeff Bezos built Amazon from the ground up. If you watch interviews from the 90s, he had a crappy office and he spray painted Amazon.com and was driving a 1991 car in 1999 when he was interviewed. The guy's a G. The guy's awesome. He's a piece of garbage, but I look up to the body of work of Jeff Bezos because everyone looked down on him. No one thought what he would do is possible and he proved everybody wrong and that's the basis of my existence i think jeff bezos is awesome elon musk all he did was born into rich sperm and he treats everybody around him like garbage when have you ever really heard a good thing about elon musk the only people that like elon musk are the people that he makes money for sounds like tampa radio it's not a true friendship you think anybody goes oh my god Elon Musk is my boy. I love talking to him on FaceTime. He's a piece of garbage. If you're saying that a school is brainwashing her, I don't know what it matters. I don't know what, I just don't get it. Leave me a voice call, 856-49-HOPPY. Explain to me why it matters what someone else does with their body. 
If they want to identify as another gender, have at it. And this one lifetime, you need to be happy because we're here for a short time and then we're dead forever. Who cares what they do? I don't get it. It's bullying. It's being mean. Because you always hear like, I'll be out somewhere and somebody who's transgender, and I don't know all the proper terms, but this comes from a good heart. So maybe I'm, I'm identifying it as the wrong term. But a transgender person will walk in and they'll be like, oh, and they'll say mean words. And I go, why? The person's just giving this business money. Leave them alone. They already kind of have a hard life being judged all the time and they don't need you being an asswipe. Just like how Elon Musk's daughter doesn't need him being a douchebag. I think he's the worst. I don't get it. God, I don't, I don't get the appeal. Wow, a Tesla, cool. It's infuriating. I'm just tired, man. I want real problems to get fixed, man. What? Well, let transgender people do what they want to do. Let gay people do what they want to do. Oh, but God doesn't like that. Where's the proof that God's real? Show me. I'm not trying to be anti-religion, but you don't have physical proof that God's real, but you have physical proof that the transgender community wants to identify as another gender. You have actual proof there. I will say... They need to tell people on uh, Bumble and Tinder that they are of another gender. Because sometimes I've been deep in some conversations and they go, I got to let you know something. And I go, what's happening, uh, Kim? And they're like, uh, do you mind that I've transitioned from a man to a woman? And I go, that's cool. Whatever you got to do is totally fine. But I, uh, I'm heterosexual and I like vagina. I'm sorry. That's the only critique is let people know on dating apps that you've transitioned. Or you can go to Nebraska Avenue and circle around the block and get an arrest. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. Ah, that never gets old. Um, It says here, former Proud Boys leader Joe Biggs sobs during sentencing as he's given 17 years in prison over January 6th after begging court not to separate him from his daughter and cancer-stricken mom. Well, that's the price you pay, bro, for committing a crime. I'm getting so passionate about this, my headphones just fell off. But I'm telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, These idiots from the January 6th event, man, my headphone keeps coming out. These people thought they were just going to get away with it. Now, do I think 17 years is a little long? Yeah, I'll give them eight. But that's what happens when you commit a crime. I don't get it. Like, I know that Trump was kind of encouraging it, but he wasn't. But he was passive aggressively. But all those idiots just walked in thinking, oh, nothing's going to happen to me. I loved how cocky they were walking around there, just doing their thing. And then their mug shots, they weren't so cocky. Now, were you, buddy? When you broke in and, you're, and there's that one dude that's sitting in Nancy Pelosi's chair. Now, listen, I think Nancy Pelosi is a dirty rod and fill in the word here. I don't like her at all. I don't like any politician at all. But you can't just break into someone's place. But I bet Hunter Biden does it all the time. I need money for crack. Can we stop protecting him? Can you imagine if Hunter Biden was Trump's kid? You would hear about him all the time. Just saying. But yeah, the Proud Boys leader, Joe Biggs, is going to prison for 17 years. Finally, the Proud Boys had so much power in the 2010s. It was nauseating. Everybody was like, well, they're not that bad. They're pretty bad. They're not somebody, if I had a daughter, even though I don't think I'll have kids because I got got a vasectomy at age 29, that's a separate thing uh, for another day. Uh, I don't think I would want my daughter to date a proud boy. I would not be proud if they came to my house and I'm this rich radio guy and my daughter was like, hi, I'm dating a proud boy. I would be like, my daughter can do better. Um, by the way, speaking of that dirty, rotten, deadbeat dad known as Elon Musk, he, no- he announced a major change for Twitter. You will soon be able to make audio and video calls on your desktop and phone. 
oh my God, that's cool. You know, you can talk to famous people on Twitter. That's, that's nice and all. This next um, thing that I'm about to tell you about Twitter, I don't think my mental health's going to like it. I'm not ready, man. The best part about Twitter was being able to tell people, go away, I'm going to block you. That was the best feeling ever because I have a lot of haters. A lot of people just talk shit about me for absolutely no reason uh, because they're bored and they have a small dick. But I got breaking news here. The blocking feature on Twitter will be gone soon. That's BS. That is ridiculous. It seems like what Elon is doing to everything in this world, he feels like a villain that just wants to ruin everything. Honestly. You can literally get harassed on Twitter and told the meanest things, and I have to look at it? Now, if he gets rid of the mute button, we have a problem. Jesus Christ. Maybe focus more on being a good father and less on a website that you inherited, you dirty, rotten imbecile. God, I hate him. And I know it's not good to have hate in your heart, but I really think he's a piece of garbage. What has he created? Yeah, he's done things to businesses to make them better. He's a consultant that was born into money. Honestly, I want him to buy a radio company. That would be hilarious. Everybody would be wanting to have him on their show. And they're like, oh, Elon, we love you. And then when the mics go off, they go, oh, he's the worst. Radio people? Whatever they say on air, just know that when the mics are off, the opposite's being said about the guest. Oh, it was so great having you on the show. Thank you. Mike goes off. Oh, that was really awful. Just saying, I've been around the block a little bit. Whatever you hear on the radio is a cartoon. I don't talk like this in real life. I'm just very passionate. So when you hear that person go, oh, that comedian was great. Was he? Are you just saying that to help a comedy club sell tickets? Next up, guys, Dolly Parton, working nine to five, keeps your calendar pretty full with the Rock and Roll Hall of Famer recently across the pond doing a round of press. And get this, while sitting down with a British radio host, her name's Claudia Winkleman at the BBC, Miss Dolly joked she actually turned down an invitation from the Princess of Wales. Good. Dolly Parton is a princess, is an angel. And if I could describe something in a sound effect, it would be just really spit on the microphone i wouldn't mind spitting on those uh that was really crude uh yeah why would kate middleton even think that an angel like dolly Parton, america's princess why would she think she would want to be around her good on dolly for declining it here's what she said I even got invited to have tea with Kate, and I felt so bad. With Princess Kate? I know, I couldn't even, because they had all the stuff set up. What? But I thought that was very sweet and nice oh. of her to invite me to tea. And I'm, one of these days, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to get to do I'm that. Sure Wouldn't that have been great? I'm sure. So then, what is the headline? It says, why would she turn down the invitation, or why did she turn it down? But then she's saying one of these days she's going to do it? She'll do it in the afterlife. I can't even imagine that extent, uh, conversation at all being riveting. Dolly is more genuine than Cade Middleton, Middleton could dream of being genuine. I adore Dolly. I don't like country music. I think it's awful. But she wasn't going to promote my rock album, so I had to say <laughs> Oh, man, I love Dolly Parton. Uh, we got a comment on Hoppy TV. It's from uh, Coach Beard 87 Love Durant. On a side note, who you got tonight, Florida or Utah? Did you watch Swamp Kings? Did not watch Swamp Kings. I'm not sure what that is. Let me Google that. And uh, if that's college football, I have no idea whatsoever. Uh, believe it or not, I made I faked it till I made it by working in sports radio for nine months, but I had no idea what was going on the whole entire time. Uh, Swamp Kids, let me see what this I don't know. I'll look it up later. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. We have this next headline here, and uh, this is a very riveting headline to to me because I'm sick and tired of people hating on women's sports. You'll see like ESPN post something that says like, oh yeah, WNBA has most points in a game or whatever. 
I know all these dudes with small D's that would dream of dating a WNBA player go, oh yeah, get back in the kitchen. And then they wonder why women don't like them. Well, I'm not being fake woke. I really think it's cool that women's sports is growing, you know? I just don't know about them making as much money as an NBA player. But that's another opinion for another day. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! A massive crowd fills the University of Nebraska. They're all there to cheer on the women's volleyball team. Oh. It's not a Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> Beyonce, that was the girls' volleyball team. Hell yeah! Honestly, there is nothing sexier in this world than a volleyball player. Oh my God! First of all, I made the freshman volleyball team because the coach thought I was going to be good. He thought I was coordinated. <laughs> there was one time we were up like 17-8 and he put me in the game and then they won 17-15 or whatever. Let's just say I'm not very coordinated and I didn't make the team sophomore year. But oh my God, the volleyball uh, players. There was this one girl. She ended up being, I think she's bisexual, but now she's married to a very muscular black woman. Her name's Jamie. I had the biggest crush on Jamie in high school, the girl, and uh, she would wear the volleyball outfit, and she was in my math class, and I was like, oh, yeah, keep dropping pencils. I like that view. That sounds creepy. 856-49-HOPPY. Jamie was a sweetheart, though, because she would give me pity grinds. I don't know if Gen Z grinds at dances anymore, but I swear to God, uh, her boyfriend would be like watching me grind on her. He was like the original cuck. It's like if Bubba the Love Sponge was at a high school dance. 92. Or Adam, 22. <laughs> Get a cuck. Volleyball team. 92,000 and three people are there, setting a new world record for the most people to attend a woman's sporting event. This. That's awesome. If you're going to hate on this and you are a sexist loser who needs to look yourself in the mirror and go, because I'm a sexist loser, that's why I've never had true love record-setting crowd was no accident. It took seven months of planning. And when tickets went on sale, 82,000 sold in just three days. The Nebraska Huskers won the epic match against the University of Nebraska at Omaha Mavericks. Oh my God, their outfits. Oh, I love that. If I ever get married, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to have kids, but I do want to get married. If I ever get married, Swear to God, I want my wife to just wear a volleyball outfit at the uh, altar. Oh my God, best thing ever. <laughs> I mean, gentlemen out there, you have to admit that, uh, yeah, the cheerleaders were kind of pretty. They put on a lot of makeup, especially, uh, uh, never mind. But this right here, spanking it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Christ. I was talking to a radio mentor I had today, uh, Brian Munchie Donovan, and he says you're always going to be the very similar to the people you began in radio with, and everybody knows that I began with shock jocks, so it shouldn't surprise you that at age 30, when talking about volleyball players, that I went on YouTube and got a spanking sound effect. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. Now, as long as you don't get the whips out, I'm good. Ladies out there, I'm a gentle lover. I don't like being hurt. I like pleasure. I'm not a weirdo. I don't need pain during sex. Now, Prince Harry, maybe? Or just anybody who's in a relationship in Florida? Yeah, you're whipped, but I'm single. This next headline here, I think this is finally Jimmy Kimmel being humble. The guy has never been humble in his life. The guy has not been funny in the past two decades. But he almost retired. But he didn't, because he knows that he can't handle being irrelevant. But then again, he's always been irrelevant. It has been nearly four months since the strike began. 121 days for the riders. And the yeah, this riders strike, I don't know when it's going to end. Like, I don't know the length of what it was in 2007 when that happened, but I'm telling you, man, like... If we're repeating the past, 2007 was the writer's strike. Then that means next year we're going to have a recession. 
frightening. It has been nearly four months since the strike began, 121 days for the writers, and the actors still getting the silent treatment. But today, the cast and crew of the neighborhood standing as a family, loud and proud with their brethren. We love the idea of just being able to come out here. Here's a Cedric the Entertainer. For this, for the purposes of standing up for our rights. It's important because we have to take care of each other. We want what's fair. This is the show. Everybody sees the, the end results of it. We, they see us in makeup and looking yeah. good and being funny. But we get one cent. I've never found that show funny. Sorry. Residuals. Somebody's been running clips of the old Steve Harvey show and I look really young on there. Do you get checks for those things when they run again? I get checks, but what happens is the checks... They dwindle, dwindle down to one cent. So not yeah, I can't imagine syndication companies really wanting to pay well for that. Ah, uh, here's the info on everybody's favorite liberal hack known as Jimmy Kimmel. Of work staffs. Strike Force 5 is the name of our podcast. Subscribe to it now. The five of us together for Jimmy a, Kimmel, a, maybe Jimmy an hour, Fallon, a, a day. Stephen Colbert, Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, Seth Meyers, and John Oliver. Oh, that is a deuce chill room. Those five idiots in a room. I bet you can't even spend two minutes without talking about Trump. I mean, those literally are the most unfunny late night TV hosts of all time. You can give me Jay Leno, David Letterman, Craig Ferguson over them. Will navigate the Hollywood strikes and beyond in their new 12 episode limited series podcast. Kim will drop this news. He was this close to stepping away from his show. Please do. Who in the last decade has gone, oh my God, I love Jimmy Kimmel. The only people that love Jimmy Kimmel are the people that are ultra liberal and love that he just makes jokes about Trump all day long. And he thinks he's being better than Trump by making fun of Trump. You're just giving the guy attention. Oh, he's the worst. How are you going to go from doing the man show with Adam Carolla? And you can say what you want about Adam Carolla, but at least he never sold out. How are you going to go from doing the man show to being like the voice of reason? You're a hack. Are you guys getting stir crazy? Are you ready to go back to work? Because as you know, I was very intent on retiring right around the time where the strike started. And now I realize like, oh yeah, it's kind of nice to work. I, I'm yeah, it's kind of nice to do something because no one really thinks about me unless I'm on TV making jokes about the president. Even though when I interviewed that deadbeat dad loser known as Hunter Biden, I gave him a fair interview. Oh, you're the worst, bro. You were so funny 15 years ago when you had that segment, Unnecessary Censorship, where it was cartoons having sex essentially on TV, and it was very disturbing, but my 14-year-old self loved it. Bring back that, Jimmy Kimmel. You know how Pete Davidson wore that shirt that says, Make Kanye 2006 again? Make Kimmel 2009 again. That dude has not been funny. Uh, speaking of 2009 humor... I was sitting on the couch the other day. I was on a second date. This girl came to my apartment and we were talking about two and a half men and we looked up uh, Angus T. Jones who played Jake on the show. Remember like 11 years ago, he went off the map and he got really religious or whatever. Well, Google the image, but he's unrecognizable now. Two and a half men's Angus T. Jones all grown up and unrecognizable in a rare public outing. Dear. What? Dear. What? Dear. D E E R. Oh, that show was so that show was so good for sex jokes. It was so naughty. What? W H A T. He's just really silly and he doesn't really get much at all. And I think that's just really, that's really him what they like about Jake. The show's half man, now a full blown adult. That's Angus out and about in LA, rocking a gray hoodie and black shorts and a full beard. And he looks so different. I bet he just wants to be off the grid, 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 like Kanye West says, says, says. Um, because the thing is, if I saw him out and about, I would not know that's Jake from Two and a Half Men. Much different look from his child star date. I bet that's what he wanted. He didn't want to get recognized. Raise it five. You raised five dollars on that? I call five dollars. <laughs> Queens, full of nines. Oh. Huh. Hey kid, don't you know what a full house is? Yeah, and I also know what a psych out is. <laughs> Angus was just 10 years old when he started playing Jake Harper back in 2003 on the CBS hit. You hungry? What are we having? I don't know, just tell me if you're hungry. 
That depends on what we're having. Ah, uh, that's a good line. I remember I had the biggest crush on, uh, what was her name, Judith, whatever, uh, the ex-wife of John Cryer's character. Oh, my God, because I love older women. Half of my hookups have been that. And I'm telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that character, the way she was so bitchy to uh, John Cryer, it was hilarious. Eminem has amazing tracks. He's got his own restaurant. He's even got an album that looks like a friggin' pinball machine. But one thing Eminem doesn't have is patience for Vivek Ramaswamy using his music. So uh, Eminem is taking a stand against Vivek Ramaswamy. Remember this? Yeah, he's this guy like running for president. Looks like such a dork. This is the guy who's the GOP candidate for president who at a rally in Iowa decided he was just going to start rapping Lose Yourself. Yeah, this guy's an idiot. This guy, I saw it on the uh, day, on the uh, Daily Mail. Man, I'm having a hard time saying that. And it drove me nuts. It was like, this cool Eminem rapping presidential candidate. Like, if you're having to tell people that you're cool because you rap Eminem, trust me, you are as cool as hell. You are so lame. I bet he tells dad jokes. He's like, oh, yeah, look at me. Let's hear how he sounds rapping. Joking now. Everybody's joking now. The clock's run out. Time's up. Over blast. Yeah, you hear the crowd going crazy. Everybody, when that guy's up there just doing his thing, everybody's like, yeah, bro, we're so proud of you. I mean, go back and listen to this real quick. You hear the crowd just going crazy and wild. The GOP candidate for president who at a rally in Iowa decided he was just going to start rapping Lose Yourself. He's joking now. Everybody's joking now. The clock's run out. Yeah. That's that's the crowd response. Yeah. A presidential candidate rapping a very cliche song from 22 years ago. He's so edgy and wild. Time's up. Over blast. Yes, Vivek clearly loves Eminem, and super lame bro types say he slayed it. Dude, he slayed it. Let's be honest. He slayed. <laughs> yeah, that was us. But the point is, Eminem is putting the kibosh on Vivek's rap career. Wrote a letter to BMI, the licensing company, and said, pull the deal. I don't want him to be able to use this anymore. Can you imagine? You're just trying to be cool and you're running for president and you're out there saying, hey, I'm this Eminem rapping cool guy, man. And then the guy that you're using for cloud to be cool says, nope. The reason why Eminem did this is because he doesn't like Vivek. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Duh. That's wow. 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 You cracked you the you want the cup, you can run the meeting. Hey, he knows he was dumb. Now let him turn around in shame and a few seconds later put on his headphones to try and escape. Point is, you can't say Vivek isn't interesting. He was on TMZ Live yesterday. We talked to him about um, climate change because he said that this agenda is a hoax. Our book this agenda is a hoax. Whenever you have to run for president, you try to do an impersonation of Obama where you really pronounce your words. Well, surface temperatures going up, yes, but we need to deal with that through mastery, through technological advances that will require more, not less use of fossil fuels. Fossil fuels. I just did a line of cocaine because I really feel awkward in public. Man, he's got really nice white teeth. Uh, that's kind of like saying the way to stop drowning is to drink more water, but everyone's entitled to their opinion. All right. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. I see this next headline right here, and I find this quite... Riveting. Can you believe that Power Rangers is 20 years old? Yes. Time flies. 30 years of Power Rangers. It's the anniversary this week since the premiere of uh, the iconic television show. So we got Walter Emanuel Jones, the Black Ranger out at LAX, and we were asking him about it. It's been a My mom would not let me watch that show because I'm very hyper. I don't know if you could tell by this 35-minute rant I've had, but I have a lot of energy. I'm very hyper. And she did not like me watching Power Rangers because she thought I was going to beat people up. But joke's on her. I was the one that got beat up on the playground. A whirlwind has been like uh, from the very beginning, from the time that it aired, uh, within that first week, we were the number one kids show in the world. Uh, there wasn't many options though. I mean, it was a good show, don't get me wrong. I was more of a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle guy. 
Yeah. In the world, which is kind of bizarre. Now, 30 years later, he gets, you know, 40 year olds coming up to him saying, I've watched you my whole life. Which is yeah. kind of wild because they're all taller than me. You know? <laughs> ah, it's a good one liner. Oh, he's so likable, that Power Ranger. I swear. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, not the show from 2003 and not the awful Michael Bay show, but the 1987 cartoon, I got it as a VHS in uh, like 2004, and I'm telling you right now, it changed my life. It's Every episode is on YouTube, and I've watched it all the time, like before I go to bed, but let's just listen to this. I mean, this is the greatest theme song ever. I mean, how can you not love this? Heroes in a half shell. I don't know. I thought Michelangelo was the coolest, or Raphael, or Donatello, or Leonardo. They're all cool. Splinter's cool, too. I also had a crush on April O'Neil. I thought she was a MILF. 856. 49 Hoppy. That's 856 494 6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio and you can always email me Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. Now, uh, usually I play more music on this show, but I'm just really having fun right now. So let's keep this going. Speaking of music, Travis Scott is going out on tour. We knew that that was uh, coming up, but he finally announced uh, the tour dates and locations uh, for his Utopia tour. Oh, uh, what a cool name, Utopia. Is that the name of the drug you use? In one America. glaring omission. Yeah, a big one. Well, we'll get into it, but uh, he's not going to be going to Houston. I wonder why. It's not like he's probably trying to avoid the city that almost canceled him because he loved to watch his fans die like Satan. He's going to be in Texas. Uh, he's going to Dallas, Dallas and Austin. Austin. But, but he's not going to go to Houston, which obviously is, number one, it's his home. They're talking over each other, and Charles just looked at Harvey like, shut up, let me talk, please. Down, but right. more important, it is the site of the Astro World tragedy where 10 people died. Right. That so, is interesting. So is he Can you imagine, like, we're all going to die and it sucks, but can you imagine, like, your life flashing before your eyes and his horrendous music, unless it's Antidote, is just playing? Because he stands like this when he raps. Can you imagine? You're literally dying. And the last thing you ever see before you go into the forever and ever blackness of nothing is that idiot rapping. Oh, God. Is he not going because there are still several pending lawsuits from people who live in Houston. Probably just that it's bad optics, but this is such a lose-lose for Travis Scott either way, because like you said, it's his hometown, he is still- I would go. If I were him, I would just act like nothing's wrong. I mean, all his kiss-ass fans forgave him anyway. Very, very popular there. If he does a tour stop in Houston, obviously it's going to make people think about Astro World because he hasn't performed there since then. But now by leaving it off conspicuously off of his tour schedule, it also makes people think about it. So wh whatever he did, this was going to come up again. Yeah. I think if he went and just acted cool, that would be the smart decision. Now, sometimes I'm in the mood for Burger King and then I, re and then I realize I don't want to be sick, so I don't get Burger King. But this next headline right here, is hilarious because I've never had Burger King and been like, oh my God, I feel better about myself. I've never had Burger King and been like, oh, I feel so full. Usually I feel sick. Interesting. Um, if you like Burger King or even if you like some other fast food restaurant, there is a lawsuit that I think um, could impact the way you are drawn into these restaurants. So there is a class action suit that a judge has now said can go forward against Burger King. Burger King had filed a motion trying to dismiss the whole thing, and a judge basically came back and said, no, they can go forward with it, and the lawsuit is about size. Yeah, size matters, like uh, John Morgan says. Uh, here's the thing. I do think that's a fair lawsuit. With the inflation prices going up, the portions are getting smaller. Like, if the inflation is going to go up, at least make the food bigger. Like, I swear, maybe it's because I was smaller, but it feels like the Whopper in 2007 was bigger than it is now. Probably because it was. Size of the Whopper. Size matters in this case. Um, the lawsuit claims that uh, Burger King, in their advertisements, um, whether that be on billboards, Got TV, it. online. Oh, sure. Uh, and also on their menu, when you go into the restaurants, that they make the Whopper appear much bigger than it ever is when you 
order it in real life. So they've done it since day one. Like you ever like go and watch a Buffalo Wild Wings commercial and the food looks really good. And then you remember in like August 2018 that the company that owned Arby's bought beat ups and that's why it sucks now. Yeah, I don't know if you guys know that. If you think Arby's is good, you're gross. Arby's is the worst food I've ever had. The shakes are unbelievably good for some reason, but the food, not so much. Uh, This next headline here makes me feel old. I remember when Paris Jackson was speaking at her father's funeral and she was a cute little kid. Now she looks like a baddie. Even birthdays, uh, posthumous birthdays, are controversial these days. Um, And one Michael Jackson proves that point. He would have turned 65 yesterday, and his daughter, among others, are getting dragged for various reasons, Paris, for her silence. Yes. Allow her to not speak about her creepy father. I'm sure she wasn't the closest to him. This video goes on for seven minutes, so I'm not going to play it because I'm almost out of time. Kind of not really. Um, but he probably wasn't a good father. And she was like nine when he died, so she probably wasn't that close to him. All these Michael Jackson fans, man, that is the one artist that has literally gotten in the way. Listen. He probably touched those kids. I know pedophilia makes you uncomfortable, and my law is that every single pedophile that's found guilty should be put to death immediately because there's no fixing it, and you're a piece of garbage. But I'm telling you right now, Michael Jackson got away with it, and it's got to be awkward because it's kind of the thing like whenever you hear like Beat It or you hear Rock With You, you can accept that it's a really good song, but you go, he's really creepy. Let's relax real quick. I'm getting worked up. Getting a little hyper. I can't believe the show's almost been on for an hour. Time flies when you're yelling about the news. So we're going to talk about marijuana, but first. On the subject of narcotics in general, the marijuana is not That is the purpose of this I think we're finally getting to the point where we can stop arguing over weed. Can we quit arguing over weed? And can we quit arguing over transgender rights and just let them do what they got to do to accept themselves in this lifetime? Because I swear, we have things that we could probably work on that don't include weed or transgender people. Um, Before I get to this headline, I got to play this. Marijuana. 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 I got it. Marijuana. I got it. Marijuana. So the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services has reportedly taken the first step toward easing federal restrictions on marijuana. Cannabis is currently legal in some form in nearly 40 states now, but federally it's still illegal and classified as a Schedule One drug. The group... It's not a drug, it's a plant. And it does so much good for you. Any politician who is uptight about marijuana in 2023, almost 2024, needs to get high to relax. Oh, I can't be out of my element. I got to be an out of touch, pretentious, rich douchebag. F you. That includes heroin and meth. Now, last year, President Biden directed HHS to review how that drug is actually classified. The president did this when he pardoned thousands of Americans who had been convicted on federal charges. of. People often tell me, like, I'll have discussions with my mom. She's like, Joe Biden's done so much good. That's actually something good he's done. Pardoning people that are in jail over a plant. When you literally have people that are committing theft in Chicago, that awful city, and they're getting probation, got it. Marijuana possession, proponents of reclassification have asked it be a Schedule 3, a group that includes drugs like Tylenol and codeine. For more, White House correspondent Slynn Wang joining us once again. All right, I have the rule. If I'm bored, you're bored. The fact that there's a seven-minute video over that beautiful plant that has no reason to be like that. I mean, come on now. Speaking of of out-of-touch, creepy politicians. Another troubling incident for Mitch McConnell. What are your thoughts on running for re-election? What are my thoughts about what? Running for re-election. I have no sympathy for him. Why is it that when Mitch McConnell freezes like an idiot, they're supposed to feel bad for him? He's done a lot of bad things in office. 
Just because you're old doesn't mean you should be like forgiven. F him. Oh. That's a... Then the 81 year old. Yay, that's the guy who's leading America. Du, 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 du. That's a... Then the 81 year old Senate minority leader stood silent. Yeah, he literally looks like one of those old people you see at McDonald's on a Saturday morning at 8 a.m. He's one of the leaders of this country. And you'll wonder why the whole world hates us. Duh, 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 runs this country. An aide steps in. Did you hear the question, Senator? Running for re-election in 2026? Yes. Still just a blank expression. All right, I'm sorry, you all. We're going to need a minute. Yeah, we're going to need a minute. Uh, can he just resign, please? Please. There's no point of having him. I just didn't like when they were supposed to give us the money. He, like, declined it. Remember that? I don't really vote. I haven't voted since 2012 for uh, politicians. But um, if he would have given us that money, we would have been able to do this. In today's Tech Bytes, a price hike for Sony PlayStation users. Sony says PlayStation Plus annual subscriptions will increase $20 for its lowest tier and a whopping $40 for its highest. Sony says, Wow, they're really relatable for their fans. Says the hike will allow the company to offer better games. A new game lineup will debut over the next month. That let us be the judge if the games are better or not. You're just doing it because you need money. Oh, we're going to hide behind the fact that we need to have these uh, prices go up because our games are so good. No, not the fact that no one uh, is playing us as much. Google is apparently poised to unveil the next generation of its Pixel phones. The Pixel 8 and 8 Pro are expected to debut at an October 4th event in New York. The new devices are rumored to have an updated ultra-wide camera, new AI-powered features, and a contactless thermometer. Whatever, I don't care anymore. Androids just do nothing for me. I am just an iPhone kid, almost an iPod. I like the iPods too. Working with her father, Jamie. Uh, my show is not always perfect. Let me rewind right here. New allegations are swirling amid the divorce between Britney Spears and her estranged husband, Sam Asghari. A new report from the Daily Mail, citing a source close to Britney, claims the singer grew suspicious that Sam was allegedly secretly working with her father, Jamie Spears, to give him details about her life and keep her in her conservatorship. Okay. How do I word this? I don't like Britney Spears' parents. I'm indifferent about Sam because I can't really read his face. But maybe... Her ex-husband giving her dad information about how she's doing. Maybe that wasn't the worst thing ever. She kind of is crazy. Happy hour. Happy hour. 